Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Management TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Welcome back to ASEAN News, everyone. It's still with me, Vanessa. 100 countries agreed to use the COVID-19 vaccine from China. Foreign Ministry spokesman Zhao Lijian at a press briefing in Beijing says more than 100 countries have approved to use Chinese COVID-19 vaccines with leaders of 30 countries being publicly vaccinated. Researchers from one of Sri Lanka's leading universities, the Sri Jayawardenapura University, issues a study report on the effectiveness of China's Sinopharm vaccine. According to the report, 95% of individuals who received two doses of the Sinopharm vaccine have developed antibodies, and two doses of the vaccine produced neutralizing antibodies in 81.25% of recipients. The report also shows that the Sinopharm vaccine is highly efficient against the Delta variant, which has become the dominant variant across the world. More than 100 countries have approved the use of Chinese vaccines, and leaders of 30 countries have publicly received Chinese vaccines. Political leaders from many countries spoke highly of the important contribution of Chinese vaccines to their countries in fighting the pandemic. Residents in foreign countries inoculated with Chinese vaccines also voiced their support to Chinese vaccines. He adds, China always calls on deepening international cooperation on COVID-19 vaccines to ensure the vaccine's accessibility and affordability for developing countries and make them a global public good. So far, China has provided more than 500 million doses of vaccines to over 100 countries and organizations. At least 33 people died and eight others are still missing after the floods hit Henan. Local authorities say heavy rains that have deluged central China's Henan province for almost a week had killed 33 people, with eight still missing. The Provincial Emergency Management Department says a total of 376,000 local residents have been relocated to safe places. So far, the deadly floods caused by heavy rains have damaged more than 215,200 hectares of crops, causing direct economic losses of about 1.22 billion yuan, or about 189 million US dollars. The provincial capital Zhengzhou saw 617.1 mm of rainfall over a three-day period, almost the equivalent of the city's average annual precipitation. According to the forecast that the Henan Provincial Meteorological Observatory activate the highest level of rainstorm alert as rainfall is expected to continue for the next three hours in a number of cities including Anyang, Hebi, Xinxiang and Ziaozuo. The local accumulated precipitation is likely to exceed 100 mm. World Health Organization and China conduct joint study on the origins of COVID-19. A senior official of the National Health Commission says the results of the World Health Organization and China joint study on the origin of COVID-19 are able to stand the test of science and history. Zheng Yixing, deputy head of the NHC, hailed the joint study as an excellent beginning while briefing the media on the origin tracing of COVID-19. Over the past months, since the release of the report, more and more scientific evidences showed that this is a highly valuable authoritative report that stands the test of science and history. Conclusions of the report are scientific and the process of drawing these conclusions upheld the rules of science. On March 30, the WHO released the report on the global tracing of COVID-19 origins following a joint research with China on issues including the pathways of the virus and future investigation in different countries. 
A total of 34 experts from the WHO and China jointly conducted a 28-day research from January 14 to February 10 in Wuhan, China. The joint study showed that coronaviruses most highly related to COVID-19 are found in bats and pangolins. The expert group also made assessments of the likelihood of possible pathways. According to the report, COVID-19 introduction through an intermediate host is likely to very likely, introduction to cold food chain products is possible, and introduction through a laboratory incident is extremely unlikely. Meanwhile, the official says China is effectively supporting relevant organizations and scientists in completing the Chinese section of WHO's origin tracing report. China also hopes that the WHO will genuinely treat the COVID-19 origin tracing work as a scientific issue, get rid of political interference and actively and prudently promote the tracing work to be carried out continuously in multiple countries and regions around the globe. Thailand holds the protest against the government about extending the lockdown in the country. More than 1,000 protesters take part in the demonstration despite an expanded coronavirus lockdown. Demonstrators carried mock body bags to represent coronavirus deaths as they blamed the Prime Minister and his government for mismanaging the COVID-19 pandemic. Thai police fired water cannon, tear gas and rubber to stop protesters from marching to the office of Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha, calling for him to resign. An office worker says the government is poorly managed, therefore the citizens demonstrate. The government is poor at managing the situation and if we don't do anything, there will be no change. The use of force by the police came after some protesters tried to dismantle barbed wire and metal barricades set up by authorities to block roads from Democracy Monument to Government House where the Prime Minister works. The protests mark one year since the first of a wave of large-scale street protests led by youth groups that attracted hundreds of thousands of people across the country. Talent reports 11,397 infections and 101 deaths, bringing the cumulative total to 403,386 cases and 3,341 fatalities, the vast majority from an outbreak since early April that is being fueled by the highly transmissible Alpha and Delta COVID-19 variants. Thailand public health officer traveled by boat to give assistance to COVID-19 patients in a remote area. Thai health officers are traveling by boat to take care of COVID-19 patients in remote communities on the outskirts of Thailand's capital after the country struggled to tackle its worst outbreak to date. Public health officers in Samut Prakan province don personal protective suits, suit herself first before navigating through small canals to provide daily tests on COVID-19 patients isolating in a remote village. Some areas of the village cannot be accessed by land, so we need to travel by boat or raft to check on COVID-19 patients. I'm doing this for the patient as it is quite hard to travel, and I'm glad the locals are accommodating us by providing transportation to people's houses. Our job is to perform a series of checks on COVID-19 patients in isolation every day, including their temperature, shortness of breath, and severe symptoms. 
คะแล้วก็สอบถามอาการนะคะก็คือดูอัตราการหายใจต่างๆนะคะแล้วก็ดูลักษณะการหายใจนะคะDrone footage over Zhengzhou shows floodwaters are still at waist higher, with entire streets underwater in many areas. Groups of people are seafaring through the floodwaters on digger trucks in an attempt to navigate the treacherous conditions and seek safety. Tens of thousands of people are being evacuated from flood-hit regions of central China, the dead toll from heavy rain that has deluged Henan province for almost a week to 33 people. More cities are inundated and crops destroyed as the severe weather spread northwards, with official Xinhua News Agency reporting direct economic losses of 1.22 billion yuan or 181 million US dollars. The Provincial Weather Bureau raised the storm alert for four cities in the north of Henan, Xinjiang, Angyan, Hebi, and Ziaozhuo to red, the highest tier of four-step color-coded weather warning system. Forest Stewardship Council has cut ties with Indonesian Korean palm oil after allegation of deforestation and human rights abuses on land. Forest Stewardship Council has cut ties with Indonesian Korean palm oil pulp and paper giant Korindo Group after allegations of deforestation and human rights abuses on land granted to them by the government. Forest Stewardship Council, an international forest management regulator, certifies wood pulp and paper companies that meet its ethical and sustainability standards. Its trademark tree logo is often found on products such as paper packaging. What we found in the investigations was that Corindo have converted land and, and we, don't, we don't allow conversion of forest into other users. They had converted forest and in that process they had also destroyed what we call high conservation values and they had also uh, not followed our rules for free prior and informed consent of the local communities in the area. Kartensen adds they had cut ties with Corindo after they could not agree on the procedure to verify the company's progress make against its commitments. The termination of Forest Stewardship Council's trademark licenses with Corindo will begin in October. 
Corindus Chief Sustainability Officer in a statement says the decision to stop the association proceedings came as a great surprise as we fulfilled every step on the mutually agreed roadmap in the past years. According to the BBC, the Indonesian Parliament launched an inquiry last year and the results have not yet been released. In relation to this matter, Indonesia's Environment and Forestry Ministry has not responded to a request for comment. Singapore police arrest high school student after a 13-year-old boy dies at school. Singapore police says they arrest students of a high school and will be charged with murder over the killing of a 13-year-old boy whose body was found in a school bathroom. They also taken an axe into evidence. Police adds the victim was found in multiple wounds and pronounced dead at the scene. Police will charge a 16-year-old boy with murder and seek a court order to remand him from a psychiatric assessment. Investigations were continuing into the motive for the assault. There was no indication the two teenagers known each other. The Education Minister, Chang Chun Singh, post on Facebook says they were shocked to receive news of the tragic incident and he also adds that the ministry was working closely with the police on the investigation. Taiwan became a trash can after the online shop search which caused by the pandemic. Taiwan became inundated with waste after a surge in COVID-19 cases, prompt movement curbs that led to the spike in online shopping, food deliveries, and that is threatening to set back efforts to reduce the consumption of a single-use plastic. Taiwan has been dealing with an outbreak of community COVID-19 transmissions since April after months of few domestic infections and amid may have been under curbs that limited personal gatherings and cartailed restaurants to take out service. Lin Yu Hui, head of recycling at Taipei's Department of Environmental Protection says the amount of discarded takeout containers in the capital Taipei between January and May increased by 85% compared to the same period last year. The Environmental Protection Department reports in May alone, Taipei produced 10.79 tons of recyclable waste versus 10.05 tons during the same period a year earlier. Much of that is single-use tableware, both paper and plastic, and that concerns environmentalists. While Chef Pan Yangming at Taipei's Anyong Korean restaurant says he spent about 20,000 Taiwan dollars or more than 700 US dollars on single-use tableware in just June, increasing his raw materials cost by up to 14%. Well, that's all for today, everyone. Don't forget to continue maintaining the health protocol and stay safe. Bye.